In this video, I'm gonna talk about charging heat pumps in the wintertime. Hi, did you guys know that Yellow Jacket is a sponsor of this show? If you didn't know that, I, I gotta I kinda wonder where you've been because I've had them for like five, six, seven years now. But that's not the point of this. They have brand new gauges that look like they're straight out of the space shuttle. Titan Max gauges that wirelessly hook up to just a whole host of different Y-Jack probes. They also perform all the calculations you need right there in the field. Heck, I'm not even positive. I'm speculating here, but I think they probably mow your grass too and rock your baby to sleep. So these things will do everything you need as a technician and installer commissioner. We'll call that an installer commissioner. So make sure you check them out. The new Y-Jack gauges and all the Y-Jack probes from Yellow Jacket. See, the tough thing about the winter time is that it's not like charging in the summer. Charging in the summer is much easier because all you do in the summertime is you'll do approach or do subcooling or superheat, depending on what kind of metering device you have. And then once you do that, you can figure out your charge as long as your airflow is good. We're going to ignore airflow, even though that's a cardinal sin, I know. But airflow must be right. But we're not going to talk about airflow in this particular video. So in the winter time, whenever you're charging, there's a couple different things you can do. Manufacturers will put some information on the machine itself, usually on the inside of the outdoor unit panel. It'll tell you what pressures you should be at, and it's okay. You can go by that, but it's a little bit difficult because if your airflow isn't right inside and outside, meaning your coils are clean, your blower set correctly on the inside, you don't have an aftermarket motor on the outdoor condenser. See, that's something a lot of people don't know is that you have to have a certain motor to go by those numbers. If you don't have the OEM replacement, if that thing goes bad and you go back with like a rescue motor or something, then the CFM is not going to be the same. It's just impossible to be the same when you think about it. Unless that motor has the exact same characteristics of the OEM motor, they're going to be different. So charging by those numbers is no longer something that you can do. Not that it's very accurate to begin with, because charging for pressures is something that most people go, no, 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 you don't do that. But in the winter time, you don't have a lot of options. You don't go inside to the indoor unit and measure subcooling like you would on the outdoor unit during the summertime. The second thing is you can withdraw all charge and weigh it back in in the proper amount. If you do that, we're talking split systems here mainly. If you do that, then you have to know the line set length. And sometimes if a house has been finished for a long time, it's hard to tell what the line set length is because you don't know exactly how it was run from indoor to outdoor. Sometimes you can tell, like it's in the crawl space, it's pretty easy to figure it out. But it's also probably the only way that you can get it exactly right is if you measure that line set and weigh it in. Now, knowing that, it's it's easier, in my opinion, to try to get close in the wintertime, not try to charge anything. Try to get close in the wintertime using whatever method you want to, and then fine-tune it when it warms up. You can cause the machine to believe it's summertime by blocking the coil and kind of artificially making the pressure higher outside. But depending on how you block that coil, it's really kind of iffy on how you can do that. Remember, you're not actually creating a warmer environment, you're just blocking the coil to simulate that. So you don't know exactly what environment you're simulating, you just know that you're making the unit think that it's warmer outside. You can charge it like that. I suppose that's as good as any of the other compromised ways, but you should always come back and check it when it's warm outside. We can compare with actual conditions that you can measure constantly. You can have the unit at full CFM because it's just so... Just think about it. It's so hard to know exactly what the parameters are when you have a bag over the condenser or maybe your shirt, like I used to do, put your shirt on a condenser, let the condenser suck it up, and then it blocks airflow. But if you're blocking airflow on one side of a condenser, it's not the same as blocking airflow with like the field piece bag on top because the field piece bag is tempering all the air going through the condenser, not just blocking one side. And depending how that coil is constructed, blocking one side may not have a uniform effect. It's very complicated, but the message I'm trying to send you is charging in the winter is hard. So try to get it close and then come back when it's warm. Always come back when it's warm, even if you're busy, because it's the only way to know that the charge is correct. 
And if someone spent a lot of money to have the system installed, you need to make sure it's charged correctly. And there's only one way to do it, in my opinion, is to come back when it's warm outside. Stay tuned for more fun facts like that from your buddy Zach on the internet. Save 8% off your order at truetechtools.com by using the Shop Talk discount code.